Welcome back to This Week in Film. I think it's week 80 of the big show. Uh, we're, oh, wow. we're the weekly podcast where we get together, we talk about the movies we watched over the past week, and uh, I'm Nick Pronto, joined as always by Midwest Matt Lauer. Matt, how's it going? It's going all right. Nick, how are you? I'm doing just fine. Uh, Matt, you had an exciting week last week. You went to you went to a big comic book convention or comic con. No, no. I went to Gen Con. Oh, what is Gen Con? Just Tell me all not about. Not quite it. the same. Uh, it is. Hang on a second here. I'm either having some sort of giant spider crawl all over my foot, or the cord to my phone is just touching my foot. <laughs> Either uh, one of those sounds like the worst thing ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it's if it's big enough to feel through your socks, it's a big spider. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, what was yeah, it? Yeah, Gen Con is a was it a oh, spider? It? Uh, I turned on the light and it was gone. So I'm going to assume it was a terrifying spider. <laughs> okay, now that you're back to sitting in the dark. Um, no, I have the light on now. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Gen Con is a massive get together for people who game. So playing like tabletop games and role playing games and things like that. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a very, uh, nerdtastic <laughs> hangout. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first time going. Where, where was it? It's in Indiana, um, in Indianapolis. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, it used to be in Geneva, Illinois, I believe. Uh, so it was, you know, the Geneva Convention. Oh. So, yeah, that's why it's called Gen Con. I'll, I'll pretend that I knew that stuff, oh, but I actually okay. found out by being explained that by my, uh, to me by my girlfriend. Okay. But, uh, so tell us, yeah. about, tell us about Gen Con. T tell us all about it. Uh, well, there were thousands and thousands of people. Wow. Um, spread across <laughs> pretty good space. Yeah, I gather that uh, Indianapolis makes a ton of money off of this thing. Uh, it is crowded. And if uh, my sources are correct, it sounds like it's actually like starting to overgrow the city a little bit. Wow, um, okay. Yeah, so it's like a four-day thing, or at least that's how long I was there. And um, you get to do things like try out new games. So, you know, people who are trying to, uh, like Kickstarter, things like that, Who uh, people who are starting out new games, you can try those out. Uh -huh. um, meet with people who have played some games for a long time and, like, like play with, you know, play with strangers that sounds right <laughs> <laughs> um uh it's kind of cool there were there was one room uh that was like a free arcade and then there was one place where in this one hall though they had a couple arcade games and they had one of my favorites which was uh gauntlet legends oh I don't know yeah if you remember that one or not. I oh remember yeah that. I, I, <laughs> I was so excited to see it there mm -hmm. um i'm not exactly the perfect audience for gen con like I've got, I've got a bit of that Lord of the Rings nerd in my blood, um, but maybe not quite as much as some of the folks there. But when I saw Gauntlet, I got pretty stoked. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so what, I got to uh, do. Uh, have you ever seen an escape room? I've done one. Yeah, I've done a couple of them. Cool. They're, I got to do one of those. That was fun. They're they're a lot of fun. They're they're rooms where you get uh you get locked in and you have to solve a bunch of puzzles. Uh, in order to find uh, the key that opens the door that lets you out. And there's a time limit and everything. Correct. Um, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was my first time doing one of those. Were you able to cool. get out? Um, we were, but I don't know if we should take too much credit because we used all the hints we could get. Oh, okay. I've never been able to escape. We came up about five minutes short like if we had five more minutes the one time we we would have been able to get out but but we've never officially escaped well maybe next time <laughs> yeah. uh so what, what were some of the highlights besides um, gauntlet legends and the escape room 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Any- well, I had good company, so that was that was a highlight for me. Uh-huh. Um, I also did something called True Dungeon, which is about as close to LARPing as I've ever been. Okay. Um, that was an interesting experience. Um, it also involved like solving some puzzles and um, some like combat mechanics that were a bit like shuffleboard. Uh-huh. Um, that was kind of fun. Um, and I went to a couple of like workshop things where people would talk about writing like fantasy stories or like what it's like to try to develop a game. Um, and those were pretty interesting too. That's cool. Uh, and I got to go to a screening yeah. <laughs> of an incredible independent film, which I believe <laughs> in which I believe you also partook. <laughs> and that is a great movie called House Shark. Debatable. <laughs> uh, well, after I, I I talked with you and and you said I needed to. Well, you you actually didn't want me to watch it. You just wanted to talk about it. I was like, well, I got time, so I I was able to find a copy of House Shark. Oh, qu- quite the finder you must be. No, and uh, I watched it as well, and. Uh, I get the feeling I did not have the Gen Con experience with Hal Shark that you did. Well, I'll say some of the uh, some of the experience was seeing it with a bunch of strangers um, at a screening. You know, it's kind of a different thing. I've never been at a screening before. I yeah, think. I've ne- I've never been to a like a like a screening like that. You know, I actually was, I, was the I, filmmaker I take that there. Back. I have been one in Chicago. Oh, you went um, to a screening of the room. Oh, that's also true. Yes. That's okay. Also true. So, <laughs> uh, I, well, this is a. Uh, you know, when I saw the room, it had already been out for quite some time. Right. Um, but you know, Tommy Wiseau was there. Uh, for this, no, the creators weren't there, which was surprising because they were giving away free signed posters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it seems it seemed like it was. Uh, you know, they're trying to promote it and and. Um, I don't get the impression that it's been shown in other places. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so I was a little surprised they weren't there, but um, eh, I think it would have been okay if they were. You know, some some real low-budget movies, if the uh, creators are there, you might not want them to be if you're, like, laughing at it. But one thing about House Shark, as I'm sure we'll get into in more detail, uh, is uh, it knows what it is. Mm-hmm. And what what is it? <laughs> so, Hellstark is a low budget independent film that is about hmm. Well, it's about a shark that's in a house, <laughs> <laughs> and it eats people. Uh, it, you know, when when the movie first starts, you think it's going to be a movie about a fourteen year old boy. Who has a 25-year-old dad for some reason. Uh, but instead, you kind of end up following the dad around, mostly through the house. Um, the movie begins with the shark eating a babysitter uh, while she's on the toilet. And um, there's a lot of... Yeah. There's some. There's definitely some gratuitous stuff right there in that first uh, first section of the movie. <laughs> and uh oh she's also it, like naked and pooping yeah but, but it kind of works because <laughs> because it so knows what it is like it's not like the movie is trying to find some creative way to to get her naked it's just like here she is taking off her clothes on the way to the bathroom, like in the hallway while she's holding a book. I think um, it's just it's just very much like uh, making fun of itself and a lot of tropes. Yeah, um, that and, is true. Yeah, so a couple guys end up teaming up. Um, it's got a lot of things that it likes to pull from Jaws. You know, it's a bit of a parody, and it pulls from a lot of other movies too. And sometimes within the same scene, it'll draw things from like three or four different movies uh but it comes back to jaws a lot as you might expect and uh 
eventually they spoiler alert for house shark <laughs> they kill the shark i also I pause occasionally before i say house shark because i have to make sure i'm not saying shark house i'm getting it wrong that's, that's a totally a different that's probably a different movie <laughs> yeah um so i think that's a i don't know you can you can correct me i think that's a pretty decent synopsis yeah it's uh I didn't like it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, there were a couple of funny moments, and uh, uh, like I, like I said to you, like the at one point someone's talking about a mall shark, and <laughs> the guy's like, the guy who's supposed to be Quint from from Jaws is like uh-huh. mall shark. No, this is a house shark. A house shark is what we're hunting. I said, that that really made me laugh. I thought that was the funniest part of the whole movie. Uh, you know, I hated that character. So I think his name was like Abraham or Lincoln or something. Yeah, everybody had presidential names. Did you notice that? I can't say I did. I'm not sure I paid that attention to anyone else's name. Yeah, like everybody, everybody's like uh, Zachary Taylor or Abraham Lincoln or uh, I'm looking at the cast list now, and one guy's just named Frank. But then, like, there's Ulysses S. Grant, Lady Bird, Ronald Reagan. A lot of like presidential puns, I guess. Uh, and I don't really know why that is. I wouldn't say it's a political movie. This is definitely a movie where where the people who were making the movie had a lot of inside jokes, uh-huh. um, like a lot of a lot of stuff that they thought was funny. And they they put it in the movie without it being explained to the to the viewer, which which sometimes can work. But in this case, uh, a lot of the comedy fell really flat. Mm-hmm. But um, like for instance, everybody having a presidential name is like a real subtle joke. And so like every time a new character was introduced in the movie, I was like, oh, what's this guy's name gonna be? Oh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, that's kind of funny, <laughs> but but never like laugh out loud funny. Well, and and there were a few moments that I did find to be laugh out loud moments, and here they are. <laughs> Tell me about okay. them. So the first one is at the beginning, after the babysitter gets eaten, and the guy and the kid are sitting there doing the the face thing from Jaws, where they like rub their face and then rub their chin, and that in and of itself was not funny. Mm-hmm. But then the dad looks at the kid. <laughs> And then he slaps him. He's <laughs> like, can't you see I'm having a bad day or something? <laughs> that, that was funny, yeah. That All made right. me laugh. All right, I'll And then that. the second one, now in spite of the fact that I actually really hated that character, the Lincoln one, uh-huh. I mean, like, really, he was putting me to sleep. Anytime, now, granted, I have not gotten much sleep in the last two weeks, but, so I was tired, but anytime he came on screen, I was just like, I'm dozing off. But he still also had two of my favorite moments. One was when they're all kind of the the shark is asleep, and he reaches for the shark's face because he has this tick for no reason where he has to touch people's faces. Uh-huh. And he's reaching for the shark, and the other guy's like, "Don't do it." He's like, "But I have to." <laughs> that made me laugh. And then about two minutes later. They sing a song to the shark to put it to sleep. <laughs> and um, this is going to make no sense to the viewers <laughs> or listeners. Um, but they start singing a lullaby. And it's a, what, the Mockingbird, I guess, is the, the song? I don't remember. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. and the guy says, I'm going to make you some human steaks. And he's, and the other guy says, and if those hum and if those steaks don't fill you up, <laughs> he goes, Mama's gonna make you some more human steaks. <laughs> and yeah. that like I just could not stop laughing at that one. It just because oh, the one guy <laughs> makes a face because in the song, if, if you don't know the song, um, the thing about the song is like if and if that mockingbird don't sing, um, Mama's gonna buy you something completely different. Yes. And, yes, it's always something else. Yeah, and so like the the look on the guy's face when he says human steaks, and then and then he says the other guy says human steaks again. The look on the main guy's face is like what? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> and that, that part really made me laugh. But I will say this. If somehow you get your hands on House Shark. It is available on uh, Amazon Prime. Really? Uh, you have to pay for it. That's incredible. Okay, cool. So if you are going to watch House Shark, <laughs> make sure you have some people with you. <laughs> Probably a couple beers. Not a bad idea. Um, and be prepared for it to be a little bit longer than it really should be. Yeah, it's definitely way longer than it needs to be. Yeah, uh, I was I was minimizing. It's a lot longer than it, it should be. It, it's like an it's almost two hours long, which is yeah. Which and then while while you're watching it, there's a ton of stuff that could have easily been cut. Um, yeah, I to, think it's been about rundown. hour twenty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think if it done that, if it had done that. Uh, like got in, got its, got its premise and its jokes, got out. I would have a much higher opinion of it, but it's mm. it it's really long, and it and it it feels really long too. Um, I will agree with that. Um, one thing that I did really like was at the end when the house gets flooded, and mm -hmm. and they hold their breaths for like ten minutes <laughs> <laughs> while they yeah. while they just pretend to be underwater. I thought that was I thought that was funny. Yeah, I I don't know what the actual budget was for this movie, um, but I feel like they did manage to to get a good amount of laughs and stuff out of it. Yeah, like, it, for for the money they they must have spent or or saved actually, uh, they they managed to stretch it into something that's actually entertaining. I know it's long, and they really didn't need to stretch it into being so long. They probably could have. I don't know. Maybe they didn't even save. They wouldn't have even saved money if they made it shorter. It felt like they put everything they had, like everything they shot, they put in the movie. Yeah, that might be the problem. You know, once they made something, they just didn't want to let it go. Yeah. Um, but, one one compliment I will give it is that it has excellent sound. Um, yeah. Like with a movie like this, sometimes you expect like lower quality sound, like a lot yes. of like a lot of hollow or echoey sounds. Uh, mm -hmm. And this one had great, it, like the sound team did a terrific job. Yeah, I actually remember there being a handful of moments that I was like, this music is like actually fitting right now. <laughs> like, like it could have been shitty music that they would have just made a joke out of. But there were a handful of times where I was like, this is actually decent music. Yeah, the music uh, track like worked pretty well with the movie too. You could tell they definitely put their heart and souls into it. Um mm -hmm. and like the acting in the movie is is okay. Um It's generally you can, okay. You can tell there like there was one the, guy who was really bad. The team that made the movie, you could tell it's like a it's probably like a, a local improv team that made the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh because everybody in the movie looks like they're all the same age, except for this one old guy. Um, so I, I imagine that's what it was. That's what will be in my fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> was when you say one old guy, do you mean the guy that came back at the end? Like the white haired guy? Yeah. Reagan. He's like, yeah, I've been in the house the whole time. I was in the house the whole time. Yeah. That yeah, he was I, the one that was when really that happened, bad. I looked. I realized that I hadn't been paying attention to the movie, and I was like, "What? <laughs> oh, I don't care." Uh, yeah, you might be right about the improv thing. I, you know, there was a moment where I thought that the mother was actually uh, quite a bit older than the the husband or ex husband, but I'm not sure that's true. Yeah. Um. No. Well, do you have anything else about House Show? I can't say I do. Okay. <laughs> watch it watch it as a party. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Nick. Nope, it's all right. I watched it by myself in the afternoon. No. Well, I hope you had a beer. I did not. I had a That's delicious I had a delicious cherry Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Mmm. Maybe we'll get oh. free Dr. Pepper. Get some of that sweet Dr. <laughs> Pepper money. <Yeah. laughs> um, 
But I, I believe you watched something else this week. Uh, I did. Uh, my wife and I watched quite a few movies this week, and I want to oh, just br- I want to briefly touch on two of them because I watched them, and I feel like I should get credit for it. <laughs> um, the first is we watched uh, Zero Dark Thirty, which is the uplifting movie about the hunt for Osama bin Laden. Uh huh. Um, have you seen it? I have not. It is uh, great. It's really good. Um, it tells the story of um, of basically how um, the CIA or whatnot um, works to find uh, the location of Osama bin Laden and then the the sending in of SEAL Team Six to uh, to kill him. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> But um, it's, spoiler alert! Yeah. Osama bin Laden's dead. Yeah, um, it stars Jessica Chastain, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite actresses. Uh, it's direct. It's directed by Catherine Bigelow, who uh, who made Point Break, also The Hurt Locker, um, and uh, it's it's a very good movie. It's very exciting. It's very uh, in depth. It's like one of those. Um, it's like a taut political thriller kind of a thing there's like a lot of politics that are involved in in hunting this guy down and and there's a lot of setbacks and a lot of uh basically a lot of torture um which which i don't agree with with the torture but the movie makes you go well (laughs) they needed to torture that guy um so uh it it makes you question your values on 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 things like that which which is always good when a movie makes you think about how you think feel about things um and uh and uh just real quick it was it was it's good it's totally worth watching if if you haven't seen it um uh that's really all I, all I had to say about that movie I've always been kind of curious about it but I've never actually spoken to anyone about it like nobody who's seen it you're you're the first conversation yeah it's I've, I've had with anyone. it's it's really good and um if you get around to watching it we could talk about it in in a little more detail because uh it's it's good it makes you it makes you think a lot about um at least it made me think about like what the what the price uh to find someone is mm-hmm. and and whether or not it's worth paying that price to do it. Um, and, and it's, it's, I, I don't really have an answer to that. So, uh, yeah. when you, when you watch it, we'll have a, a more in depth conversation about it. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Cause I, I will gladly check that out. But spoiler alert, they kill Osama bin Laden. Damn it, Nick. <laughs> um, the other movie that I watched that I wanted to briefly touch upon was Sicario. Uh, I, we, I finally got around to watching that movie. Uh, have you seen that? I haven't seen it. It's almost the same exact uh, situation and feel. Like, I have the sense that it's a good movie, but uh-huh. I've never spoken to anyone who's seen it. And this movie, I feel the same way I did about Zero Dark Thirty, where where it makes you question the methods and the methodology of... Uh, of the drug war in the United States. Like, I don't agree with, with a lot of what the drug war represents now, but like, um, the, the, it's basically about, a a cartel. Uh, let me start over. So like the, uh, the, the story is, uh, first off, it's directed by Dennis Villanueva, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite directors. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to repeat everything I said from the there last time. There are a lot time. of themes today. Yeah. Um, uh, but it stars Emily Blunt who plays this, uh, FBI counter drug lady. Like she, she runs these smaller drug, uh, investigations and one of her, uh, the movie starts off with her, uh, busting a, a house in and what's revealed is that inside this house are like tons of bodies. Um, and this is in a Southern Texas town. So it's, what it's trying to say is that the, the cartel drug war that like the hell that exists in Mexico, uh, as far as like dealing with the cartels is bleeding into the United States. Um, it's not just in, it's not just in Juarez anymore. It's in, 
whatever Texas town it is. Um, and so the CIA gets involved and uh, that's Josh Brolin and Benicio del Toro. And their job is to take down this one cartel guy, but they don't know where he is. Like the, his location is completely up in the air. And, and the, and the rest of the movie is about them trying to find the location of this drug guy. And uh, it's thrilling. It's, it's really good. It's a really okay. good movie. And and again, it's like another movie where like you you question the methods and the the way they go about everything, and you're like, is 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 what's happening like really what's happening out there? Because if so, I don't know how comfortable I am with that. And like you're along with Emily Blunt for the ride, and uh, it's it's crazy, it's a crazy movie. <laughs> I'll check it out. I, I even was interested in seeing the sequel, but I hadn't seen the first one yet. I can't wait to see the sequel now. Um, I I don't know if Dennis Villanueva was is involved in it. Let me click mm -hmm. this button right here on the internet machine and see if he is the director. Let's you have a Villanueva button? Yep, on the Amazing. IMDb. Uh, no, it's directed by Stefano Solima. But it has a uh, it has a seven point three on the IMDb rating, which is usually a good sign. That's decent, yeah. Um, well, and man, Josh Brolin's really like he's killing. I it. feel like he's having like a third wind. Yeah, because I feel like he's had some other moments, and he's been around for a long time. But uh, he's he's in some sort of uh, prime right now. Yeah, he's he's doing a great job. Um. So yeah, that was Sicario. Um, but then, so that's all I have to say about that, which brings me to the most important movie I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. Um, my wife and I, we watched Annihilation, uh, which is a Natalie Portman movie directed by Alex Garland. Uh, and he's the guy who directed Ex Machina, right. um, uh, which is another movie that makes you think, which Annihilation, Annihilation makes you think a lot oh, that's for sure and you have read the books right correct okay terrific because <laughs> because i have so many questions all right but, but i can't say that me reading the book means i have the answers right well that's one mm -hmm. thing that i learned is that um so my wife and i watched this on like saturday night and then monday night we were like let's watch it again so we watched it twice Oh um, wow! Yeah, and to to see if maybe like having watched it once, we'd understand a little more because we both were talking about it nonstop. So if you haven't seen Annihilation, I'm gonna spoil the hell out of it. So I I would recommend seeing it. It's it's definitely worth watching it, but it's a thinker. Like it really makes you think a lot. Uh, and then when the movie's over, there are no answers. So um keep that in mind but from from here on out it's going to be spoiler spoiler city um it, it's not it's not utterly confusing the whole time there is enough stuff uh kind of dropped by characters along the way uh -huh. to I, I just for people who are thinking about watching it sure yeah, um, yeah, yeah there are enough things dropped along the way for you to have some sense of what's going on it's not as though you're watching a complete art house movie yeah that's very true i, I hope i didn't uh set that tone um and the stuff that the stuff that makes you think is is it's the little things in the movie that that really make you think where you're like well why is why is this or why is that mm -hmm. um so here we go um uh, so annihilation is about natalie portman is a biology ex-soldier but is hang on <laughs> Natalie <laughs> yeah, Portman. Yeah, this is hard to 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 put a label on what she is anyway. She used to be a soldier, and now she's like a, a an academic. She teaches biology at some school, and um, her husband is like a special forces army guy because that's where they met. They met while she was in the army, and uh, he is missing for twelve months. For twelve months, he's gone. Um, and then she's like trying to move on with her life a little bit, I guess. And he just shows up, uh, like out of nowhere, he just shows up. And while she's talking to him, it's 
it's clear that something's wrong with him and uh he starts bleeding and they call an ambulance and while they're in the ambulance the government shows up steals him out of the ambulance and takes him take takes him and her to this secluded area called area x i think yes and and it's there that it's revealed that he was part of a secret mission that went into this location known as the shimmer which is like a a rainbow wor- <laughs> rainbow world and like it looks oil slicked kind of world not like black oil slick but but like the sheen on oil you know like that rainbowy sheen yeah. kind of thing and they say that he went in there and of all the people they've ever sent in he's the first person to come out and and so then she meets up with these other women and they all say that they're going into the shimmer and and Natalie Portman says, I want to be a part of this team to go in. So she goes in and immediately everything goes to hell. And and for the sake of, you know, illustrating, it's not it's not like they're teleported to another world. It's like something that's happening on Earth that's sort of creating this different world atmosphere. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention behind the shimmer. The very beginning of the movie is like an, an asteroid smashes into this lighthouse on the beach. Okay. So and that's there you go. <laughs> so that's basically the plot. Now I have lots of mm-hmm. questions. Go for I it. have lots of questions. Okay. And um I did buy the book. Like I bought the book cuz I was like while we're watching it the second time I was like I'm getting this book. You get got, the whole trilogy? Yeah, there's like a trilogy that comes in one book. Yeah, it's called the Southern Reach Trilogy. Yeah. And um, so if I ask questions that get answers in the book, like in the other, in the, like the book two or book three, uh-huh. uh, don't tell me because I'm going to read the book. <laughs> okay. But um, if uh, if not, feel free to, to let me know. But um, okay, so she starts out without a tattoo okay on her forearm i don't even remember that (laughs) oh man i got so many questions about this tattoo because okay well i I don't have any answers (laughs) (laughs) that's that's gonna be so disappointing to jill to hear because we have so many questions about this damn tattoo so the movie starts off with her being uh interviewed by by benedict wong and um on her forearm is this tattoo of uh, a snake eating itself or or an infinity symbol kind of a thing mm-hmm. um and i guess it's called an ouroboros ouroboros something like that and um anyway so she's got it at the end but at the beginning she doesn't have the tattoo and um we notice that uh, so the, you know, the guy that the husband cuts his stomach open and there's like the snake inside the man. Yeah. Listeners, if you haven't seen the movie at this point, the, the show will make zero sense. <laughs> 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 um, so when Oscar Isaacs cuts that guy's stomach open and like ins- his insides are moving around. Uh-huh. That guy who got his stomach cut open has the same tattoo on his forearm. Oh, yeah. And then, like, I was reading something somewhere else that said that the uh, uh, one of one of the girls on the uh, the expedition team also has that tattoo, but but I don't know how accurate that was. But you have no answers on the tattoo. I I don't remember anything about a tattoo oh, yeah. mentioned in the like the the. As the movie's going on, like at one point she mentions she's got this bruising on her forearm, but that's like the beginning of the tattoo forming on her on her. So Interesting. one of the things that happens when you go into the shimmer is um, the, the way the shimmer works is it basically refracts everything. Um, there, there's no radio signals that can get in and no radio signals can get out because the, the way the shimmer is like affecting everything, including the main character's DNA. Um, and, and it's basically the, everything that they're standing around is slowly becoming a part of them. Um, so 
Is that accurate? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's not exactly spelled out in the book. Uh huh. Um, but that's that's more or less my understanding. Yeah, that there's a combining and kind of interweaving between this growing area mm-hmm. and what it's interacting with. It's sort of like evolving things in a uh, kind of a like mathematically chaotic sort of way. Right. Yeah. Cause she shows at some point she pulls like her own blood out, like to do a blood test and she looks under a microscope at her blood and her blood is dividing and one cell remains normal and then the other cell that it divided into is part shimmer now. Like it has like that mm. translucent rainbowy look to it. And so like what that implies is that every time her cell divides, she's going to have more and more of the shimmer inside of her as as time goes on. Um, the the other thing that um, we noticed is that uh, and it's and it's spelled out pretty clear, but like. The minute they go into the shimmer, the next scene is four days later because she wakes up and she's got no idea where she's been for the last four days. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? Is that explained in the book? No. no. Is that what happens in the book too? She just kind of wakes up and it's been uh, four days and they have no recollection? Because, because here's my thought. Is that, is that in that moment, is she the double is she the duplicate at that point and like the the real her is somewhere else um things in the book i don't want to put this uh it's not exactly a one to one translation of the book but in terms of doing different things that would work better in a movie uh-huh it it does that so so the sort of questiony ambigu- uh, ambiguity and um, uncertainty that you have, it's all there in the book too. Okay. There are a few things that are a little bit more because you can be in her thoughts more, uh, are a little bit more spelled out. Yeah. Um, but it's not spelled out in terms of here's what's happening. It's more spelled out in terms of like, here's what it's like for me experiencing this as a character who's right. also confused. Okay. So she's kind of like, when time passes, um, if it even does, I'm pretty sure it does. Cause there, there are definitely moments here where she's like, wait, what the heck was just happening? Right. What's going on here? I'm kind of confused by, Oh, and the, the way time passes in the shimmer is exact, exaggerated. So like she's in the shimmer for like maybe two weeks, but it turns out she was in it for two, for like four months. Mm-hmm. So, so it's uh so like it's the, like minimized while you're within it. It's like a like the uh like inception. No, it's like the reverse of inception. Yeah, with the time like it's amplified kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so then so that's like a thought that I have is that when she goes when she first goes into the shimmer and then she like blacks out for 4 days that the person the person who wakes up is the double of her like that's not natalie portman anymore that's somebody else but she has all of natalie portman's memories and things like that but like that's why she keeps having those crazy dreams because she doesn't know what's going on with herself so so then how how did it read to you then at the end when she and her double split from one another i think that's just another copy like a third copy? Yeah. Huh. But I don't know. That's just like a thought I had when I was watching it again. This is a movie that, that I think thinks it's smarter than it is, and it does a really good job of convincing you that it is. So you over, <laughs> so that you you overthink everything, and I think that's what I'm doing is I'm just overthinking a lot of the stuff. Uh, that may be true. And and honestly, that's how I felt about Ex Machina. I, I don't get why people think that movie's so incredible. Oh, I love um, Ex Machina. Well, I think Ex Machina loves itself too. <laughs> um, but uh, and I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I just uh, didn't think it was all that new. 
Um, this one, I, I, having read the book and having read the book first, I don't know if it'll be different for you reading it second. Um, I feel like the book is so strange and kind of told differently that if you were to make it in a movie, I don't, I'm not sure you could make it into a movie that didn't seem like it was trying to be smarter than it is. But I think what it's going for is just still being ambiguous. I don't think it's so much that it's trying to be smart as it is just trying to tell you a story that leaves you going, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's sort of linear enough that you still feel like you're being told a story. You don't feel like it's just a work of art, Mm -hmm. but you still have that kind of like unease and confusion. And, and I don't mean to oversell the books. I don't think they're the best books in the world. Uh, I do think the first one of the three was the most enjoyable. And I actually thought it was a pretty quick read. Um, But as I went through the second and third books, I was like, man, these don't, they're different. And they're told from sort of different points of view. And I think one of them, the first, have you read any of the first one yet? No, I just got it today. Okay. Thanks, Amazon. (laughs) Maybe we'll get some of that sweet Amazon money. Sweet Amazon money. (laughs) Uh, I think that the first book is told in first person. And the second book is told in third person. Okay. And it's like follows a different character. I don't even know about the third one. Um, so, uh, I like, I can't remember the third book or maybe it's the second one. I can't remember. I don't know, but that's kind of how you walk away from it too. Going like, I don't remember. And my sister read these books and said the same thing. Like we were talking right before I went to see Annihilation and she was like, I know what I read those, but I can't remember anything. (laughs) It's like you walk into the shimmer yourself. Right. Um, but, uh, um, Huh, what was I going to say? Well, so there are things that are definitely different. And when I was reading the book, I thought you wouldn't be able to turn this into a movie. And I had no idea that they were actually intending to. Um, And you'll see as you read it, you'll go, yeah, this thing that they left out of the movie was probably a good idea. Because if it were included, it would be really weird. Right. Um, And there are some things that don't happen in the book that do happen in the movie. Oh, really? like, I, I don't yeah. know if it's a spoiler to tell you something's not in the book. Sure, like what? So that whole like battle with herself where she splits into two people? Yeah. It's not in the book. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. You, you're in a different position reading the book to figure out that like she is she or isn't she even herself? Like right. I don't I don't know that you even know. By the end of the book, I could I could be wrong, but I don't I don't know if it's ever actually told to you. The movie's like, here's her eye; she's not herself. Um, and I think when you know when she does split in half and is fighting herself, and they're like, oh look, one of them survived. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I only know this because I read the book and I know how weird it is, but like, pretty sure right. they're going in the direction of <laughs> she's not the one that survived. Um, but in the book, it's actually, I, I didn't do that in the movie cause I remembered it being clearly that way in the book. Uh-huh. Uh, huh. it just, I know it was kind of weird enough and it wasn't being held down by any rules. Um, but I don't know. You'll, you'll have to actually let me know. Maybe, maybe it, it does make it clear in the book. Uh, but I feel like it's actually left a little bit more ambiguous. Um, and there, there were, you know, like in the movie, which I think is the best moment in the whole movie, that bear thing. Yeah, that was awesome. That was, yeah. That was so cool. That was like, for me in the theater, I was like, ugh, I want to piss myself right the now. Only, this is like the creepiest thing. Yeah. Um. So like the the night before the bear eats one of their friends, like one of the members of the expedition, this bear who's who's like part bear, part cow, part monster, um, uh, I guess we should go back. So, like the the animals in the Shimmer are mutating as well. Um, at at one point they're attacked by this crocodile who's like its DNA is being like actively split with a shark, and uh, that's a scary enough image on its own. 
but um uh later they get attacked by this bear that it looks like it's like four different animals and and while a lot of the a lot of the mutations in the shimmer are beautiful like there's a lot of beautiful flowers and 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 some beautiful animal mutations a lot of the mutations are are nightmarish and ugly uh and just terrifying including this bear monster um and it it captures and kills their friend and while it's killing their friend its dna gets joined with with the girl because the the bear eats the voice box out of the girl's throat like it rips her throat out and i guess because it ate her and the last thing that she was saying was help me the the bear now and it's the bear now can say help me in the voice of this girl and it's the most horrifying thing it's so terrifying oh man so effective such an effective scene yeah uh, it it really was. I mean, like I can't emphasize enough. That's probably one of my favorite m- moments in like all movies. Yeah, it was really. And good. the second time you that, see it, not nearly as effective. But that first time, you're like, holy, holy crap! And I don't think that the bear is in the book. Um, oh, that's disappointing. There, there's something else, and it's not nearly as horrifying. Although it is kind of haunting. Um, that she sort of, she sees, and, and, you know, it's how it's sort of incorporating some humanness. I I won't, I won't say all the details, Uh uh, but there's something else that I think they, they kind of went, Hey, let's do this with a different kind of creature and make this, uh, scary as hell. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so the, the, like I said, I think they made some good choices in terms of what to do with it, turning it into, uh, turning it into a movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope they don't make sequels though, because I don't, I don't. F- the the sequels don't pan out in a way that if they were to do it with the movie, it would really, I think, make any sense. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, you'll have to check it out and let me know. Um, but I, I, I think it would it would really lose something if they tried to take the second and third books and make them into movies. Interesting. The, the first one, I think, would be the weirdest to turn into a movie because of the material. So, like, it's not because they're so weird. I'm, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised that they were able to create this out of that book. Um, the second and third one, I just don't think would make very interesting movies uh after seeing what this one was i oh, think they okay. would be like, kind of like letdowns oh okay um so then the the next question i have is yeah. is about the end um where where she she destroys the alien and and its headquarters uh, and the shimmer disappears. Uh, and when she does that, her husband or what, what is the, her husband's double is, um, healthy His like, he's back to normal, um, as far as health wise. And she goes to see him and, and she's like, you're not Kane, are you? And he goes, I don't think so. And, and he goes, are you Lena? Uh, and she's, and she doesn't respond, but her eyes have like that shimmery glow that his eyes have. Mm. And is that in the book? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it's not. Uh. Uh-uh. Because I couldn't decide if, if like, cause my, my competing ideas are like, if at the beginning when she blacks out and she wakes up and we're following a different character, um, is is that the Lena that we have, or is it just because she was in the shimmer for so long that she's changed, and like half of her body is is already the alien, and the other half isn't? And what what does that mean? Uh, I'm sad now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'm 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 really stretching my memory here, but I do think. 
that at the end of the book, I was convinced, um, like, okay, she's she's the replica of herself or the new version of herself. Right. Um, I just don't think it actually tells you that. It just does enough storytelling that you would conclude that. Yeah. Like you kind of walk away going like, oh, I kind of, I think I see how this thing's working. Mm, and then the probably not right. The other thing is that she spends four months in the shimmer and her husband spends three times as much because uh, he's gone an entire year and she's gone for four months. Um, when when her husband is finally makes it to the lighthouse is are, are all the bodies that are outside the lighthouse, all the team members that have gone in there. <laughs> Like all that all this is done differently in the book. The whole thing with her husband, in terms of him actually being in it, mm-hmm. uh, that's very different in the book. It's very very different in the book. Really? Um, yeah. You you really don't. I I kind of. Mm, I kind of want to say you don't know what's happened to him, but actually I think now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I think I do remember what happened to him, but if I explain it to you, it will spoil something else. Oh, okay. Then uh, that, uh, you, you can, you can go ahead and discover sure. on your own. Um, but, uh, and, and yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, when it comes to stuff at the lighthouse, that actually is a bit more, that's it, that's done very differently. There are some people there, and it is like now I'm trying to remember. In the movie, did she find a ton of versions of journals? No. Okay, so she finds different stuff in the lighthouse. Uh, she finds a bunch of journals, and there are people there, but it's it's a pretty different uh, situation. It's a bit of a different visual. Um, And there's some character interaction stuff there that's that actually I think that part would have been more interesting in the movie. Uh, But they wanted to end it a little bit. They have a different way of wrapping things up in the movie. Yeah. So when you when you get to the lighthouse, you'll have a pretty different set of events that are going on there. Um. And then the other thing about the lighthouse is uh, when she goes inside, she finds like a body that is like burned up against the wall and a video camera that's aimed right at it. And she turns on the video camera and it's her husband who's clearly like lost his mind. Uh, He's talking nonsense and he's, he's what you don't realize is that he's speaking to someone and uh, uh, he basically commits suicide um, and like, as I watch that, I, I think it's because he doesn't know who he is anymore. He doesn't know if he, how long he doesn't know how long we don't know as a viewer, how long he's been around the double mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and he's been in the, he's been there for three times as long as Lena. So his mind is already like already out of whack. So he commits suicide. I think not being sure if he's the double or if he's the original him. Is that in the book? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, oh man. Okay. <laughs> I uh, I struggle to decide whether the movie's better than the book or the book's better than the movie, and I think there might not really be an answer to that. I will say that of of the book and the movie, that bears my favorite part of anything. Um. Bear was but the, awesome. The counterpart to that and the storylines or strains that it links up to, I think are a bit more satisfying in the book. Um, the next question that I have is uh, about the affair she has with the uh, the other professor. Yeah. All right. So does that happen after he's been gone for six months? Or does that I happen? There is an affair in the book. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think there is. Oh, 
because well in the mo- in the movie she she has these flashbacks to an affair that she's having with with this guy who's having a barbecue <laughs> and uh and um and uh, as a as a viewer you don't know if it's taking pl- cuz they make a point of saying that when her husband goes into the shimmer she's contacting the military like every day for 6 months and then all of a sudden she stops and what what I want to know is if if she stops because she has the affair with the neighbor or the uh, the other professor guy <clears throat> and uh but you have no answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, in one of the things that's kind of interesting about the book and makes it have a very different feel from other books. I think some people would be kind of turned off by it. Um but the main character is not much of a character. Like there's not a whole lot of backstory. There are things that are hinted at. Like she sort of has conversations in her head with her husband, like not, not actual conversations, but she's just sort of like, you're kind of hearing things from her perspective. So she's sort of like, yeah, I wonder what you thought back then. Yeah. Uh, I'll bet you felt disappointed that I wasn't more romantic or whatever. Cause she's a little, not asexual, but like, Maybe a bit. Uh, she's she's a little neutral on emotions and stuff. So so, and I think some of that works well with the whole. Oh, she's splitting into this other thing. Is it actually happening? Is it not? Is it you know like it? It, it probably would read a bit differently if she was like a very animated, you know, very uh, type B emotional kind of person. Uh huh. Um, cause then you'd be like, oh, suddenly she's completely different. Um, cause that would be a weird thing for an alien to be like, uh, so, so in a lot of ways, like she's not quite a blank slate, but kind of close to it. And, and it's, and it's all, it's just hinted at, like, there are a lot of things that in another book would be foreshadowing, right? Like, here's this hint of a thing that you're going to find out more about later. And this book is written very differently. It's like, here are hints of things you're going to fill in the blanks yourself because it's not going to. Oh, okay. And so, so even that other storyline, um, that is, uh, not, it's the thing that they replaced with a bear monster. Okay. Um, that thing has some pretty, it's not important to the plot, but it's important to your interests. Some pretty important stuff in it. But it will never say this is what's happening. It's just hinted at. Okay. And it's really in your hands to go, oh, I think that's what's going on. And then to go, when's it going to tell me? And then it won't. Interesting. It, it's it's all still sort of in your hands. The writer is an interesting guy. I actually ended up reading those books because I was reading a book by him about writing. And it's so off the wall and weird. It's called Wonder Book. Um, and it's like a very interactive book and, and he's like, Oh, here are a bunch of characters in this book about writing that are going to interrupt me telling you about writing to make you do random stuff to get your brain thinking differently and break every rule you have. And so I, I, while I was reading it, I'm like, man, this guy's strange. I should read his books. So I put down the book about writing and read those books. And I'm like, yep, these are pretty weird. <laughs> he, he has his own way of doing stuff. And just for the sake of it being as different as it is, I'd say it's pretty cool. Uh, the author's name is Jeff Vandermeer, for those who are interested. Um, I think those are all the main questions that I had about the movie. Uh, I'm happy to have not answered that. (laughs) I really, I really enjoyed this movie. And if you've listened to this and you haven't seen it, um, sorry, Uh, but you should check it out. It's, it's pretty interesting. And uh, I guess uh, ambiguous too, because you can just make up the movie. You can just make it up because the movie doesn't tell you the movie doesn't tell you one way or the other, like what, what is real and what's not. So you can just kind of make your own fan fiction, like while you're watching the movie, it might even be ambiguous enough that the spoilers don't matter at all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, what did go ahead? No, go ahead. 
What did you think of? I, I remember the when I was reviewing this a uh, couple months back. Um, I remember what I was saying about the acting more than I remember the people themselves. Mm-hmm. But I know everyone was fine except for the like lead woman, the psychologist, Jennifer Jason Lee. Good God, did you? feel like she sucked as much as i did um when i watched it the first time i thought man this i I agreed with like i went back and listened to the to the episode that you had because i had questions and and you were spoiler free about the (laughs) annihilation (laughs) um but um uh, I totally agreed with you like that. She, she spent way too much time trying to act tough but when i watched it the second time um it it didn't resonate as much like she just seemed like she was she had her own objective and she was going to do it no matter what and it didn't come off as her acting tough okay watching it watching it a second time made me change because you because you find out about what's going on with her and that kind of rearranges like she she's got this much time left so she's got to go now i'll be interested to see also, how, how how that reads to you in the book, then too. I, I don't see. I, I think the the movie actually explains a lot more than the book does, uh, and 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 with her too, maybe. Interesting. But but more happens with her in the book. Like there's more interaction. There's just less explanation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the, in the movie, she's kind of emotionless. Um. So. Her her acting tough, at least, you know, I've only seen it the one time, but her acting tough felt for me like Sigourney Weaver trying to act tough in um, Avatar. Yeah, I'll give you that. Or she was like smoking and she's like, what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> and you're like, you're, you never cursed before? You remember you were in Aliens and you were a badass? Yeah. 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 Anyway. All right, so that was Annihilation. I'm sure there's like 40 different topics I wanted to bring up, but I forget what they are now. I'll have to watch it again. I could probably throw a couple questions your way even. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Um, So I guess that'll wrap things up for us this week on the old podcast. Uh, Anything to plug, Matt? Uh, No, not really. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I just want to say check out Matt V's new podcast Movies in the AM I think they have like three or four episodes now Uh, Movies in the AM is its name You can find it on iTunes (laughs) (laughs) Um, And uh, I guess if that's the end of the reel We'll see you next week in film See you then